The call to worship is taken from Psalm 66, verses 1 to 4. Shout for joy to God, all the earth sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Let us all rise and worship the Lord together. I'm so glad you came my life I'm so glad you came to save us You came from heaven to earth To show the way From the earth to the cross My death to pay From the cross to the grave From the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high Sing the praises. I'm so glad you in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to be from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. To show the way from the earth to the cross, my death to be from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift the name on high. Lord, I lift the name on high. Lord, I lift the name on high. God is mighty to save. He is. 
is mighty to save forever, all for of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We sing it for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We sing it for the glory of the risen King. Saving, He can put the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you have given us voices and hands to praise your name. Help us to praise you with everything that you have given us. We love you, Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the CM Worship for February 21st, 2021. We're glad that you are here to join us uh, here on YouTube this Sunday. Well, we hope that uh, those children who have gone back to school, that you're enjoying your time back at school and that you're happy to see your friends again. And for those who are studying online, we hope that you are still trying to do your best and trying not to get distracted uh, by other things in your house. Well, today we're going to talk about the topic of kindness and how do we show kindness by going the extra mile? What does it mean to actually go the extra mile? It means that we go beyond what is expected of us to be kind. So let's take a look at our Bible video for today to learn what it means to go the extra mile. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 41. Jesus was rocking the world. Everywhere he traveled, he told about the good news of God's kingdom. He called people to turn away from the wrong things they had done, and he healed sick people. Great crowds began to follow Jesus. So one day, he went up on a mountainside and sat down to share with them how God wants us to live. Blessed are those who are humble. They will be given the earth. God created us. He knows that we were designed to find joy and be at peace when we follow His ways when we see and treat others the way God does. So, right in the middle of what's often called the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said this. Suppose someone forces you to go one mile. Go two miles with them. Okay, what? <laughs> to our ears, this probably sounds like a word problem, or maybe like our PE teacher telling us to go run laps. But the people listening to Jesus knew exactly what he meant. They all lived under the rule of the Caesar in Rome. The Romans had conquered many, many territories. Judea had become a little backwater province of the Roman Empire. And Roman soldiers were sent to keep order. Jesus and all the people he taught lived under Roman rule. And they had to obey the law of Rome, including this one. I decree that any Roman soldier may force a Jew to carry his pack for precisely one mile. If you're thinking, what's the big deal? Think again. Being a Roman soldier was not for wimps. Sometimes the packs they carried weighed as much as 100 pounds. It took real grit and stamina to march for miles carrying that much gear. So it wasn't unusual for a soldier to call on some random person along the road to haul their pack for one mile. 
or about a thousand steps. And if that person says no, well, it was considered an act of rebellion against the empire. Now, imagine you're an everyday, ordinary, average Joe, or Joseph. You're hiking along the road, maybe you're on your way to Jerusalem. When you look up and in the distance, you see a Roman soldier heading your way. I don't know about you, but I think I'd turn right around and head back the other way. Or get off the road and head into a grove of olive trees. Or maybe just avoid eye contact at all costs. But maybe none of that works. The soldier stops, calls you out, and you have no choice but to look up. The soldier orders you to take his heavy pack and haul it along for a whole mile. You can't fight the empire. So, you pick up the pack. And it's forward march. You're probably counting your steps the whole way. 58, 59, just waiting until you can drop that pack. 681, 682, holding out until you can get away from this soldier that sees you as scum. 998, 999, 1000. <gasps> That's it, you're free. Roman law says that that soldier can't make you go more than one mile. So you can toss that pack like it's hot and run on home. <laughs> Except, Jesus says something else. Suppose someone forces you to go one mile. Go two miles with them. You had to carry that pack the first mile. You didn't have a choice. But now you get to choose. And if you choose to take that pack another mile, it says a lot. It says, I matter. I'm valuable just like you. And I can make my own choices. But it also says you matter. This is a really heavy load you have to carry. And I'm going to help you not because I have to, but because I choose to. Go the extra mile doesn't just mean go big or go home. Going the extra mile means that you make a choice to help someone, to be kind. You choose an action that says, I'm doing this for you because I want to, not because I have to. And I'm doing this because you are made in the image of God. And that makes you valuable to him and to me. So you may not live in an empire, but you can still go the extra mile. All right, welcome back. Um, as we learned in our Bible video, we learned that uh, going the extra mile means that a soldier can ask a person on the road to walk, an, walk a mile with his heavy pack, uh, that which is about uh, 1,000 steps. Going the extra mile means that you would not just go 1,000 steps, but you would actually go another 1,000 steps. So in total, that would be 2,000 steps or two miles. This is an extra kind gesture uh, that uh, this person who's carrying the pack would do, and it would be beyond the expectation of what that person would expect. So that's what it means to go the extra mile, and this is where the saying comes from. Well, today we're going to learn a little Greek. Uh, so let's start with this word for kindness. Uh, did you know in the New Testament that the Bible was written in the Greek language? Well, uh, let's learn some Greek today because uh, it's good to learn uh, the Greek language, which is the language that the Bible was originally written in. So the first word that we're going to learn is the word krestos, which is a combination of two words, kind and good. And krestos means that you are eternally useful. So uh, kindness actually serves a purpose. Uh, it, when we are kind to others, usually others will be kind to us. And kindness is a fruit of the spirit that is developed over time when we become a Christ follower. It takes time for us to develop kindness and learn how to be kind towards others. And another Greek word is the word for good, which is the word agathos, which means intrinsically kind. It is true goodness that comes from God and it is empowered by him. We do not do good works uh, out of our own strength, but out of God's strength. And so just like I taught you two weeks ago, we know that kindness, uh, we are kind to others because God was kind to us first. 
So this reminds us, what is our definition for the word kindness? Kindness is showing others that they are valuable by the way you treat them. So I was watching this YouTube video on some uh, kids that were doing random acts of kindness. Uh, and here are some of the 10 things that they uh, decided to do for people in their neighborhood. They, first of all, they donated toys to the foster care. Um, they uh, gave roses to the elderly in senior ho seniors' homes. They picked up trash in the playground. Uh, uh, they uh, gave diapers to a pregnancy center. Um, another kid um, left quarters for games so that the other kids could play for free. Um, there was a, a, one of the child uh, put $1 bills in children's books so that when that person bought the book, they would have a, a special surprise. The kids also filled uh, boxes for Operation Christmas Child. Uh, they bought donuts and, and passed them out to the firefighters and to the policemen. And they also uh, um, made these encouraging notes and put them in random places so that people could find them. So we know that not all of these tasks are easy for us to do right now during this COVID pandemic, but can we think of different ways that we can show kindness to our neighbors and to our friends in a COVID safe and friendly way? Well, let me give you some examples of what I've seen on the news and what I've, uh, what I've witnessed. So I, I've, seen, uh, I've heard of stories of people paying for the other customer that is behind them in the drive through line. I've seen how uh, there's uh, restaurants that would deliver food to healthcare workers in the hospital to thank them for their service. I've seen kids that draw pictures for the healthcare workers uh, to also thank them. I've seen an elderly woman who buys $10 uh, Tim Horton car cards to give to people that she meets and leaves some on the bench for those that are homeless. Um, and and there, the list goes on. There's an 11-year-old uh, child who uh, makes these mask straps to put at the back of your mask so that it's more comfortable for the healthcare workers. And even there's a, a, a child who started um, a campaign called Socktober, which was uh, to collect socks for homeless people. So these are all called random acts of kindness or paying it forward. Uh, there are so many ways that we can give back and show kindness to others during the pandemic. We just need to be creative and find safe ways to do it. So let's read our Bible uh, verse for this month. Uh, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, it says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, we're going to clothe ourselves with compassion, with kindness, with humility, with gentleness and patience. So what is this verse trying to tell us? It's trying to tell us that we need to put on all these things as if they were like different pieces of clothing because we are God's chosen people that are dearly loved so that we can be a powerful witness to those that are around us so that they would see uh, God in us. So this is a conscious choice that we make every day. Okay, I've invited a special guest to come and join us today. Uncle Vincent, can you come and show us, uh, come and uh, help me with a, a demo, okay? All right, so hi, Uncle Vincent. Uh, today, um, I'm gonna ask you to put on some uh, different pieces of clothing, okay? And so uh, we're going to start with your jacket. So your jacket is actually going to represent patience, okay? So can you put on your, your uh, jacket of patience, please? Okay, all right, yep, all zipped up, ready to go. Okay, next is uh, your hat of humility. Can you put on your hat of humility, please? Okay, so we know that we need to, uh, to put on our hat of humility, stay humble, right? Okay, so next uh, we're going to put on our, um, our pants of uh, gentleness, please. Okay, all right, now you got lots of uh, gentleness. Okay, and finally, let's put on your shoes of kindness. Okay, one shoe going on, and then our second shoe. Excellent. Okay, so now you are all ready to go. So just do a quick quick recap of all the clothes that uh, Vincent has uh, just put on. And this is something that we would want to do every day too. Okay, so we want to make sure we put on our hat of humility, right? We want to put on our jacket of patience. Uh, we want to put on our pants of uh, gentleness and put on our shoes of kindness. All right, good, you're all set to go. Thank you, Uncle Vincent. Okay, so here is your homework for this week. First of all, I want you to start by uh, thinking of five things, uh, five different ways that you can show kindness for the month of February, okay? So you can brainstorm some ideas with your family or with your Sunday school class and come up with some really good ideas.
All right, the second thing I want you to do is to put your plan into action. I want you to think about how will you, put, how will you do it, okay? How, how often will you do it? Will you do it every day? Will you do it every week? Will you do it every month? So uh, make a plan and I want you to stick to it, okay? It can be as simple as smiling to somebody who looks sad or calling somebody who you haven't talked to in a, in a little while. Or uh, if you wanted to uh, be a little bit more bold and extravagant, you might want to give gifts to your neighbors, so maybe little Hershey kisses for Valentine's Day or post-it notes on your neighbor's doors. These are just little ways that we can spread kindness and show uh, people that we care. So remember, kindness matters. We all have it in us to, to be kind to those around us. It's never too late to be kind. And our goal for this week is to be kinder than we have to be. And that is our bottom line for this week. Let's go the extra mile, kids. Let's pray together. Dear God, we know that uh, you showed kindness to us first, so that's why we can be kind to others. Help us uh, uh, to find different ways to be kind to those around us because kindness matters uh, to you and to us. Help us to be kind, kinder than we need to be. We love you, Lord. Amen. All right, that's a rise and let's receive the benediction for today. May the God of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Stay safe and healthy and see you next week. Greetings, our friends in Canada. Uh, we greet you from Serbia. My name is Vera. And I'm Danny. Kourangis. We have been in Serbia over 30 years, and it is our privilege to say hello to you because we cannot be there in person. God did some amazing things in Serbia during war, during different needs, during poverty. We looked for opportunities to reach out to people, uh, look after their immediate needs, and tell them about Jesus. As a result, there is a church, there is churches, a number of ministries in this city that are flourishing and we desire to see it spread all over our country. The news ministry, actually it's 12 years old, is uh, helping uh, addict, addict persons to come to real life. And we, we all know that the real life is with Christ. Uh, 12 years ago, a number of them came to us seeing sign on the church. Uh, that it is a church, thinking that maybe church will help them because they tried everything else uh, in government institutions, hospitals, everything else, but nothing helped. So we, we took one and the second one and, and they met the Lord, were revived, so we, we decided to open the center. So hundreds of people went through our center. Uh, it is our privilege to, to see a person coming to us for interview totally broken, everybody left him, a uh, number of them are homeless, uh, and we see what Christ can do in their lives. So uh, it is our privilege to see them, how they came in, and then what God did in their lives. And physically, they change it right away. Spiritually, it takes a little bit of time, but God is working in their lives. Hi, my name is Trujan, and I was a drug addict for 25 years, and uh, after some years, I went to a methadone therapy, and, and slowly I was, I was getting more desperate and desperate, and at the end, I, I had no solutions. I would kill myself if, if I only had a gun. But then I had a friend who finished a program here six years ago, and he would, he would come in my house and, and plant a seed about the God and about this place, and, and after a while, I decided to come here and try because I didn't have anything else. I was broken and, and he brought me here in this place and, and here I met Jesus and, and he came in my life and he brought such a change that, that I mean, it's a God of miracles. And, and thank to the God and, and thank to, to these people who, who opened this center. I'm, I'm alive now and I have a future and I have a mm. purpose in my life. Mm. What happened last Sunday? Last Sunday we were on the Danube River and I was baptized and it was one more step in, in my, my trust in God and, and my way with Him. Mm. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Vera and Danny to Sirba and for their faithful service in the last 30 years there. Please continue to bless Vera and Danny and their family members. 
that witnessed the change in Saraba and your amazing work there. Thank you for opening a rehab center for the drug addicts. Thank you for changing the lives of these addicts. Those who were lost and desperate found hope in you. Those who were rejected by society found a loving family in Christ. Those who almost gave up found a future in you. May you continue to strengthen their faith and use their testimonies to attract many more to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.